So now I introduce your care expected utility, the first theory for decision making under ambiguity that was introduced by Giboa and Schmeidler. So we're looking at the context of decision making under uncertainty. First, the preparatory definition. Capital W, I call it a waiting function or event waiting function if the following things hold. A first, maybe this here. I hope you know this is notation for the collection of all the subsets of the capital S. So this is the set of all the events. W function set to each event, it assigns a number between 0 and 1 in such a manner that the empty event is, gets weight 0, the universal event gets the normalized weight 1. We have modernity with respect to set inclusion, so a superset has a bigger weight. This generalizes probability measures. Probability measures are the special case where additivity must also be satisfied. These functions need not satisfy additivity. So with that preparatory de definition, I'm going to define rank-dependent utility for decision under uncertainty. By the way, rank-dependent utility is another name for, for Schuka expect utility. They mean the same thing. You may notice here, as uh, several times before, that often for decision under risk, I use the same terms as for decision under uncertainty. I don't distinguish between them. Maybe you think, if we have different concepts, is it better to use different terms to emphasize that they are different? Well, sometimes it's better to use the same term to emphasize that they are not really different. And that is happening here also, because it can be seen that rank-dependent utility for uncertainty, which I'm going to find now, is a quite general thing. It can be seen that decision-making under risk is simply a special case of decision under uncertainty. If you formulate this theory that I'm going to define now for decision under risk, you get exactly rank-dependent utility for risk as Quiggin introduced it. No more, no less. So it really, they are the same concept. And that's also weighting function. This is very much the same, and maybe more than now meet the eye, as the weighting function for, uh, for that was transforming probabilities. So I deliberately use the same terms. And so for the definition to come, it will not surprise you that it will be very analogous to decision on the risk. You will have to see a difference. Anyway, ring dependent utility means that we uh, assume there exists a weighting function, capital W, and the utility function capital U, such that, and I'm going to again assume a complete ranking of the outcomes. So if I write here the general prospect, you see I assume that the outcomes have been ranked. I can always read a number of events, get that done. This is evaluated by such a function representing preferences. It's again a convex combination of utility. It's Now it's really a convex combination again. And what remains to be done is tell you what these decision rates by J are. And it will not come as a surprise. Here is the definition. First, a term. This event, I call it the rank of outcome XJ. It is the event of receiving an outcome rank better. So now it's not a probability, but an event. You know, you see, I'm here doing everything the same, only events instead of probabilities. And a decision weight, no surprise to come. The decision weight is the marginal W contribution of the outcome event to the rank. Indeed, that's what the difference here is that I wrote here. So completely analogous to risk again. And then notation also completely analogous to risk. That decision weight is often denoted in this manner. So I put an event here, another event is a superscript. So this pair of events, let me already say it. If I have a pair of events where I write one as a superscript, I call that a ranked, so they should be disjoint. I call that a ranked event, having in mind one is the outcome event, the other is the rank. And then the decision weight is, here I write it, the marginal W contribution of the outcome event to the rank. So all the notation, exactly like you saw before, only with events of, instead of probabilities. So this will be easy for you to digest, I hope. Now with that, let us go to first exercise, and then I repeat, first I repeat some notation, so you have it right before your eye when the next exercise it comes. We're assuming rank-dependent utility with the utility function linear. Then assume that you are in the experiment heaven. How would you go about measuring the weight of event E? So you can think about it, pause the video, and I advise you to think long. If you don't see it easily, spend more time thinking. Uh, look again more at the formulas that we just defined and try to see how it works. And then pause the video, work on it, and then come back. Okay, now I present a solution to you. The easy way to go about is very much like we did with the Dufinetti first meeting, measuring subjective probabilities. Take here the prospect giving you one if E happens zero otherwise. Find the certainty equivalent alpha. 
and then I'm going to substitute rank dependent utility formula. The rank dependent utility of alpha is the W of capital S times utility of alpha, and W of capital S is 1, utility of alpha is alpha, so it's simply alpha. The rank dependent utility of this prospect is the W value of event E times utility of 1 is 1, plus then something times that utility is 0, that's 0 anyhow. So this is simply W of E. So here we have the solution, alpha is W of E. This was very much like we did with subjective probability to finality, very easy. And we're done here. Now let us move on to the next job. Let us accommodate the Ellsberg paradox. Here I repeat the Ellsberg paradox. There's a known and an unknown ambiguous urn, you remember. Here we have unknown composition. And people rather gamble on the two colors of the known urn than of the unknown urn. We have these two strict preferences. Now you can uh, try to find for yourself how Randy Panic Utility can accommodate this finding and pause the video, think for a moment, and if you have an idea, then you come back. Okay, now I'm going to show you the solution. And I write, uh, so here we have the rank dependent to this prospect must be bigger than the rank dependent to that prospect. The rank dependent, I'm going to assume utility of zero to be zero. So then the rank dependent to this prospect is simply the weight of that red event k times utility of 20 euro. The rank dependent to this prospect is the weight of that event times utility of 20 euro. But the utility of 20 euro drops. I didn't even write it. So I immediately get, well, almost immediately, I get this inequality. For the black color, the same. Now we have this inequality in terms of the W function that follows. Well, we had it before with probability, and then we could not accommodate it because the additivity uh, restriction of uh, probability was too restrictive to get this done. But here with a non additive weighting function, we can very easily get it done. Almost any weight, you can very just, for instance, we can take for the known events we can take the weight equal to 0.4. Well, these events have objective probability 0.5, but often empirically we find that people are a bit pessimistic, so it, it, the weight can be a bit more. This is what you find empirically typically, weight 0.4. And then for the ambiguous event, the weights can be lower. So people like ambiguous events less, so the difference between these two is a sort of an index of ambiguity aversion. You can just with the W non-additive W function, you can get this done with no problem at all. So this was an easy job, an easy uh, victory that we uh, got here. Now, uh, and uh, by the way, the home bias can be sim explained similarly. So now um, it's a bit too soon to cry victory, maybe because the result came easy. It came very easily, too easily in a way, because we have now here this theory: if you can let this W function be any non-relative function, that's so general, you can do almost anything you want. So, and many people have written in the literature, and it is true, this theory, as I presented to you now, is too general. Also, if you look at the measurement, a moment ago you thought, oh, it's very easy to get the decision weight of an event, no more difficult than with expected utility. But wait a moment. Now, if you want to know the W function, you have to do, for every event, you have to do a separate measurement, well, the empty event and the universal event not, but every other event, you have to do a separate measurement, because... Uh, you have only some uh, the monotonous impose some inequalities, not more. So you have to do 2n minus 2, if you can follow measurements, if you have n states of nature, it grows exponentially, and already for three or four states, it's too big a job to ever get done. So people generally, and also here I can accommodate the Ellsberg paradox, yeah, but the theory is so general. So people generally agree that this theory, as I presented it now, is too general. We need to find restrictions subcases that are tractable and still empirically realistic and what kind of work is going on uh, on that uh, point you shouldn't uh, maybe you think so that means that the theory that uh, Kibo and Schmidt Institute was not a good theory that's not true it was it's a good starting point you know a very good general starting point making it easy for people to find restrictions to follow up on that this holds for many other ambiguity theories, also for instance, multiplier theories, such as multiplier are way too general to be tractable. But special case can be developed, and people do that a lot. So these are general theories, uh, but they are still very useful to start from. That's also, this was a very big, important innovation. It's one of the biggest moves in decision theory, in fact, because before people had no idea how to handle ambiguity, and this opened up the door. Anyway, with this definition, I'm going to 
finish uh, the uh, material of this meeting and getting tractable theories and doing all kind of work with ambiguity. It also presented you many other ambiguity theories that were invented uh, after the, my book appeared in 2010 because we're quite f farther in future. Those things will be uh, discussed and presented in the next and last meeting.